There's an old Rudyard Kipling quote that goes, I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. And funny enough, those same six questions are the perfect way to understand one of IT's most misunderstood topics, and that's IT service management, or ITSM. If you've heard people talk about ITSM, or ITIL, or ServiceNow, and you thought, what exactly are they talking about, then this video's for you. We're going to break down ITSM. We're we'll talking about who uses it, why they use it, what it's for, how it's implemented, who, what, where, when, why, and how of ITSM, and ITIL, and ServiceNow. And at the end, I'm going to share one thing that most people just completely overlook, but once you understand it, the whole picture kind of just clicks into place. So let's jump into it. Let's start with the big one. What is ITSM and why do businesses use it? It's easy to forget, but there was a time when businesses ran without IT. No computers, no help desk, no tickets. And they kind of did just fine. IT came later to help businesses move faster and serve customers better and operate more efficiently. It was a support function, and that's still what it is today for most companies. The challenge is, IT has become a massive investment between the people and the systems and the infrastructure and the cloud. It's expensive, and like any major investment, leadership wants to know, are we actually getting value from this? And that's where ITSM comes in. IT service management is the discipline of managing how IT delivers services to the rest of the business. And when we talk about services in ITSM, what we mean is something kind of specific. A service is anything that IT provides that helps the business do its job. That might be giving someone access to email or setting up a new laptop, hosting an internal application or managing cloud storage. If the business relies on it and IT is responsible for delivering it and supporting it, that's considered an IT service. ITSM creates structure and consistency and accountability so that every support request or outage or change isn't just handled, but it's handled well. In short, ITSM helps make sure that IT is doing what it was supposed to do, and that's support the business, not run it. So who is ITSM for? The short answer is anyone who relies on IT to do their job. That starts with the IT teams themselves the help desk staff, system admins, developers, people working behind the scenes to keep systems running and users supported. Then you've got the business users, folks in HR and finance and operations, anyone who submits a ticket, requests software or needs help from IT to stay productive. If you've ever reported an issue or needed a new laptop, you've actually already interacted with ITSM. Then there's also the leadership and management, people who care about service quality and accountability making sure the company's IT investment is delivering real value. And finally, in many industries, there's the customer. If a telecom company, for example,'s billing system goes down or an airplane's app stops working, it's not just an IT issue, that's a customer experience problem. And ITSM is one of the things that helps prevent that. So whether you're part of IT or the business or you're a customer, ITSM is there to make sure everything keeps running. So where is ITSM actually used? Well, there's a few ways to answer that. First, from an industry perspective, you'll find ITSM in healthcare, telecom, finance, education, retail, transportation, and government, basically anywhere that relies on technology to serve people. Second, where inside of a company is ITSM used? And it usually starts with the IT department, help desk teams, infrastructure admins, system engineers. But in many organizations, you'll also see ITSM concepts used in other departments like HR, facilities, and finance, especially when they manage requests and internal services. And finally, where can you go to learn more about ITSM? And I'll tell you, a great place to start is the Axelos website, which manages the ITIL framework, one of the most popular approaches to ITSM. You can also check out ITSM-focused training platforms like PeopleCert, Pluralsight, or LinkedIn Learning, which offer courses on ITIL and ITSM, and incident management and change control. And if you're thinking about working with ServiceNow directly, 
one of the most widely used ITSM platforms, I've put together a free CSA certification starter pack to help you get started. If you want that, you'll find the link in the description. Okay, so when? When do companies need to start using ITSM? And if you're in the early stages of a company, especially if it's small, you probably don't. If someone's laptop breaks, they just walk over and ask for help. No big deal. You don't need a system. But as the company grows, things change. More people, more devices, more software, and suddenly those informal requests start turning into missed tickets and delayed fixes, repeated problems, frustrated users, and customers. That's when IT starts needing structure. Not for the sake of control, but to protect the business and the value of its investment. IT needs to know what's in our environment, what's connected to what, who owns what, and what happens if something breaks. And ITSM brings the structure, consistency, and visibility that IT needs to scale and support the business and avoid becoming bottlenecks. So when is ITSM needed? It's needed when IT starts to grow up, when it shifts from fixing things to running like a service business and ensuring that the company gets real value from its technology. Let's zoom out for a second. ITSM or IT service management is the discipline of managing how IT delivers services to the business. It's not a tool and it's not a platform, it's a mindset. It's a way of working that brings structure, consistency and accountability to how IT supports the organization. So why is it important? Without ITSM, IT teams operate in kind of a reactive chaos. Everyone's putting out fires and answering one-off emails solving the same problems over and over, but no one's actually improving the system. With ITSM in place, those same teams work smarter. Requests are handled consistently. Issues are resolved faster. There's less guesswork and there's more reliability. And from a business standpoint, ITSM adds something just as important, visibility. Leaders can track how IT is performing. Where are the bottlenecks? And what's improving and what's not? That kind of data leads to better decisions, better services, and fewer costly surprises, especially in large organizations. A mistake in IT can impact thousands of customers or users, and ITSM helps reduce that risk. So we've talked about what ITSM is and who it's for and why it matters, but how does it actually work? ITSM works by using structured, repeatable processes to handle the day-to-day -day work of IT. Things like incident management, when something breaks and needs to be fixed. Request fulfillment, when someone needs access to an application or a new device. And change management, when IT needs to make updates without causing outages. These aren't random tasks, they're well-defined processes that help IT deliver faster, more reliable, and with fewer mistakes. And most organizations don't invent these processes from scratch. They use frameworks like ITIL, which provides a set of best practices for managing IT services. ITIL is like a blueprint, and one that's been tested and improved across thousands of organizations. And when it comes to actually putting those processes into action, many companies turn to platforms like ServiceNow. ServiceNow brings the framework to life with workflows, automation, approvals, tracking, reporting, everything IT needs to manage services at scale. So if you've ever submitted a ticket or tracked a request or waited for an approval, chances are you've already seen ITSM in action. That's how it works, a process, a framework, and a platform, all working together to help IT serve the business better. Before we wrap up, here's something that a lot of people miss. For years, companies have all had the same basic IT needs, you know, fix issues, fulfill requests, manage changes, but they were all trying to figure it out on their own. Everyone was reinventing the wheel, building their own systems, and writing custom code, or patching together spreadsheets and email chains. But managing IT services isn't what makes a business unique. It's not your competitive advantage, it's just something that you need to get right. That's where frameworks like ITIL come in. It's a shared playbook. And platforms like ServiceNow took it further, turning that playbook into a real working system. It could run right out of the box. So instead of every company building their own tools for ticketing and approvals and reporting and CMDB, 
Now we just implement it and get back to focusing on what actually makes the business competitive. If you're interested in this space, and especially if you're interested in platforms like ServiceNow, the next step is getting your feet on solid ground. I've created a free ServiceNow study guide ebook to help you do exactly that. It's packed with simplified explanations, real world examples, and the exact notes I've used to help hundreds of students start their ServiceNow careers and prepare for the Certified System Administrator exam, also known as the ServiceNow CSA. You can download that entirely free by clicking on the link in the description box. And if you're interested in more videos like this one, then consider subscribing to the channel. I post videos about ServiceNow and helping people develop their IT careers. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.